In this lesson, we'll create this list view and grid view transition with Webflow Interactions, and we'll set it up so that if we refresh the page, it can remember the last setting the user had applied. So we'll work on setting up this timeline together. So to get started, we have this collection list and Webflow for our grid and another collection list and Webflow for our list view. And I'm gonna set this second one to display none by default so that it's hidden. And here I have this button with a class of is grid and another with a class of is list. So I'll head to interactions, we'll use interactions with GSAP, and we'll create a click interaction here, and we'll go ahead with that control button list selected. Each time we click it, we're going to add an action here. So I'll select the grid wrapper, and I'll add a custom action, and I'll call this fade grid. The first thing I want to do is fade the grid out. So right now it's fading the button we clicked on. We want to switch that over to class. So we're selecting the grid wrapper, and it's trying to find a grid wrapper inside of the button we clicked on, which there is none in there. So we'll switch this to none so it can find a grid wrapper anywhere on the page. And we'll animate this to opacity zero, and we want this to happen over a duration of 0 0.4 seconds. So now that grid wrapper just fades out. So we'll back out of that. And the next thing we want to do is run a set, which allows us to just have an action happen instantly. And we want to set the grid wrapper. We're going to call this hide grid. Um, we want to set it to display none. So with that grid wrapper class selected, we'll go ahead and add a display and we'll switch that over to none and we'll remove the other steps. So that happens right after the grid fades out. Now I can also right click and duplicate this and I'll click the second one. I'll call this a uh, show list and I want to target the list wrapper and I want to make sure that this is going to be set to display block. So as soon as the grid fades out, it gets switched to display none. The list gets switched to block. And from here, we want to add another step. And here I'm going to stagger in the items inside the list. So I'll add a custom action here. And we'll make sure we're affecting the class anywhere on the page. We'll animate them from opacity 0 from a move uh, Y that's pushed down by 2 rem to a move Y of 0 rem in full opacity. And we want to add a stagger, so we'll add a delay of 0.2 seconds in between each item. Each item will have a duration of 0.5, so that they just kind of, um, they'll just kind of slide up one after the other if I play this here, like so. So now that we have that, I also have this background element. It's positioned absolute behind the buttons. It's 50% the width of the entire controls. And we want to just slide it over. So with our interaction here, I'll go ahead and create another custom step here. This is going to be on the class of that control background. And we want to animate it on X to push it over by 100% of its own width so that it just slides over completely. And since we're seeing where this starts and where it ends, we want to add an in-out ease so we ease the beginning and the end of this movement. And I'll add the strongest ease possible. And I'll also uh, increase the duration some. I'll call this step my toggle. And I'll go ahead and make sure I push this all the way to the beginning so this happens right at the start. And I'll call this step my um, show, or we'll call it fade list items or reveal list items. So we have that set here. And so now what we'll want to do is make it work in reverse. So if I click on this uh, grid button, so to do that, I can add another trigger here, another click trigger up top, and then that's going to target the control button. And uh, I want to make sure that I'm targeting the is grid version of that. And whenever we click on that, it won't, each time we click on it, we want to reverse our entire timeline. So it just plays it backwards. And so now if we were to preview this, when I click here, it slides over. And we when I click on the grid, it reverses. Um, one thing we do want to sort out is when I click on this here, notice how it just restarts each time. And that's because we have it set on this one to play from the beginning. So if we just uh, press play instead, it'll pick up where it left off. So that means um, it'll just naturally play. And because this one reverses, um, it'll be able to play again. That also means we can kind of interrupt it midway, which is really nice instead of having to wait for it to completely finish. Now, one thing we'll notice here is whenever we reverse, I would rather this list just fade out instead of staggering the items. And I would rather these grid items fade in. And also, we would want this toggle to move back instantly instead of having to wait for the animation before the toggle moves. So anytime we want our 
animations to be different, uh, it's better to create a separate interaction instead of trying to just reverse one timeline. That goes for things like menus, uh, open and close, hover in and out. Anytime we want the uh, first state and second state to be different, we would create separate interactions. So I'll delete this. I'll rename this something like list view. And uh, with our interactions opened, I'll go ahead and duplicate this. And I'll call this one my grid view. And so on the grid view interaction here, we're actually going to want to say whenever we click on the control with the class of is grid, and we're going to play our entire timeline here. Now, what we're going to want to do here is we'll start with this and we'll call this fade list. So we're going to fade out the list instead. And this will be our list wrapper. And we'll go ahead and animate it to opacity zero. And then this toggle here will be animating back to zero transform. And we're not setting a from state so that we can interrupt it. So if it's in the middle of sliding to this way and we click, it'll be able to go to zero from wherever it was last. So from here, we want to, um, this case, we're going to hide our list. So this will be the list wrapper. Um, we'll be switching that to display none. And then we want to show our grid. And so this is going to be the grid wrapper. And we'll just be switching that over to display block, like so. And then we want to reveal the grid items in this case. So this will be our grid item. And we want to make sure that we are animating this um, from zero to full opacity so that the grid items just kind of stagger in like so. Now, we'll run into a couple issues here. Um, one thing we'll notice is that when I click, um, this is working, and I click back, and it kind of works, but the next time I click, it's not actually working at all. And that's because whenever we had this timeline here set, um, we have it set to play on each click. But after we play it that first time, the animation's at its end state. And because we're never reversing it, when we play it, it's just, it can't do anything. So we actually had to play it from the beginning when we're doing two separate ones like this. And we can have that set here for each of them. So now each time I click, it's actually going to be able to move that back and forth, uh, which is great. Um, but we're running into quite a few issues here. So some of the issues is, first of all, whenever we... Uh, if we were to open this list view, for instance, we'll notice that we, we're fading out this grid and then it's set to opacity zero at the end of this animation. So when we go into the grid view one and we show this grid here, we never reset it back to full opacity. So when you're dealing with separate timelines, you have to be mindful of whatever actions you took in the other timeline to actually reset that in this timeline. So when I show this grid view, I'm actually going to want to reset its opacity to full. And that way it can stay uh, full from that point on. And then another action we took in this inside this list view is we revealed the list items, which is great. So that's all revealing up. And then inside of the grid view, some actions we took is we faded out the um, list wrapper. So that animated it to opacity zero. And so that means whenever we show that list again over here, we're going to want to do the exact same thing. We'll set it to full opacity so that we're just kind of resetting some of those things. So now we should notice where we're able to, to um, have this working both ways for the most part. Um, some issues that we'll run into here is, first of all, just how on page load initially the items are hidden. And the reason for that, if we go ahead and open up this grid view here and we look at this reveal items, is that we set a from to. So GSAP is going to apply this from state in CSS so that we don't have any flicker, which is usually a great thing. But in this case, we actually don't want that opacity zero set on page load. So the way that we could actually do that is we'd have to override that from state somewhere else. And if we try to override it inside this interaction, it's actually going to bug out and glitch um, with these steps. So we want to actually set a from state inside of our original list view. And I'll just go ahead and duplicate uh, this step here. And we'll go ahead and call this, um, we'll call this grid item initial state. And we want to go ahead and set that uh, on the grid items here. And 
In this case, we really just need to set the from state. We're not worried about two. We want to make sure that on page load, the grid items are full opacity and they have no transform. We really don't need a stagger. We don't need much of a duration or anything. I'll push this back so it's kind of out the way. Um, so that should pretty much keep the, the grid items initially there on page load. Um, the problem is the order that these interactions create it in matters. So we have an initial state of full opacity on the grid items here. And on the second one uh, for the grid items, we have an initial state of zero opacity on the second interaction. So that zero opacity is still going to win out. Uh, so what we want to do is we just want to make sure that the list view interaction was created after. So I can just duplicate it. I can delete the original list view. I'll rename this to not say copy anymore. So now because this list view interaction was created after the grid view interaction, the initial state that's applied here is actually going to win out on page load for this list view. So if I were to preview this, now our grid items are fully visible. And when we switch, we have it completely working here. Now, a couple things we will run into issues with is when I click this, it's resetting each time. So the same problem we had from before. And we can't actually just set this to play because then it'll just get stuck. It'll only uh, play one time and it'll never play again. So we do need it to play um, each time. One thing we could try doing is for whichever item we click on, we could set it to pointer events none so that we can't click it again. But the problem with that is the user can still tab onto it and hit enter, and they can just keep re-triggering that buggy animation over and over again, which isn't quite what we want. So what we really want is a bit of logic to say when an item is active, if we click on it, don't play this animation. And unfortunately, GSAP doesn't give us those controls from the UI. Um, so there's a couple things we need to take into account when building this out. First, we would need something like an ARIA label. And that just lets screen reader users know the purpose of this button. So I can call this something like grid view. And I would want an ARIA label on this since there's no text in the button. That's why I'm doing this. And I'll call this list view. And then we want to know which button is actually pressed. So we would give this an ARIA pressed. And we would call this true. And then we would give this other one an ARIA pressed. And we would set this to false. So that when screen readers tab onto this button, they can know if it's pressed or not pressed. Now, we would need uh, to be able to update this. So when we click on this button, we would want to be able to switch this to true and switch the uh, this one to false. Now, we can't do that with the native UI currently. So we can really use code to solve a, a lot of these problems. So here what I'm doing is I'm saying I'm grabbing that grid uh, button with the class of is grid and the list button. And we're saying whenever we click on the grid button, we'll go ahead and switch that grid button to a reoppressed true and the list button to a reoppressed false. And when we click on the list button, we'll switch the list button to true and the, the grid button will be switched to false. Now, what I'm adding right here is I'm saying when we click on that grid button, if the grid button is already set to true, we'll just return. And that means none of the rest of this code will run. So if we trigger our animation here, then when we click on that grid button, if it's already true, if it's already active, the animation won't play and we won't get that bug that we were having. So all we need to do is be able to run this, um, run this interaction or trigger it with our code instead of in here. So where we have this uh, targeting here, I'll go ahead and switch this to a custom event and I can delete the, the class here. And with that custom event, I'll call this um, something like so this is for our grid view, so I'll call this grid view. And uh, we're, we're setting it to play from the beginning. And then for the list view one, we'll uh, go ahead and add a custom event. And we'll call this list view. And that one is going to play from beginning. So we can actually run this in code. So if I just copy this and I um, head back over to page settings, so whenever I click on the list view button, all I would want to do is just run that code here. And so that way it plays my list view animation only if that list view button isn't already pressed. And I can go ahead and head back over to my grid view here and I can copy that code and I can close this out. And so now here, if I go ahead and run this in here, I'm going to play that uh, grid view animation here only if the grid view button isn't already pressed. So now if we save this and we enable our code, 
we'll have the area attributes switching on these. And if I click on this button here, I'm not actually re-triggering that animation. And I can click back and I can just go back and forth with that animation. Now, because of how we have this set up, we can set it where when the user switches to list view, if they refresh the page, it will remember what they have selected last. Now to do this, whenever we click on the grid view button here, we would want to add an item to local storage. So we'll say local storage dot set item and we'll set an item called view and we'll set its value to grid. And whenever we click on the list view button, we just want to do local storage uh, set item again. And so we'll set the item and we'll go ahead and set the, the view item here and we'll set its value to list like so. So we're switching the value of the view item between uh, grid and list, depending on the button that's clicked. Then on page load, we just want to check the value of that view item. So we'll say local storage and we'll say um, dot get item and we'll say get the, the value of the view item and if its value is equal to list then we want to run some code here um, so the thing we want to do is actually play our list view interaction here but because we're not doing this inside one click we need to make sure that we're waiting till webflow is ready before we run that list view interaction and another thing we'll want to do is switch that list button um, over to aria press true and the grid one over to pressed false and then we'll run the list view interaction um, only if the last value they checked for view was list so if we save this and we publish so here i can switch between items back and forth freely if i my last value was grid i can refresh and it's good but if my last value was list and i refresh it'll slide back over into the list view and we can also speed up how fast it slides into that list view. So I have this list view regular event. I could create another custom event. I could call it list view fast. And I can make that move, uh, speed up the entire timeline three times its original speed. And then I could just copy that. And maybe I just want it to be a bit faster um, whenever we're pulling it up from local storage. So in that case, I would just replace this right here with the list view fast version. It's gonna take our same list view timeline, but it'll just speed it up to be faster. So now if we check this out and I, um, let's say we were on the list view and then we refresh, we'll notice now it's much faster in sliding into that list view um, when pulling it up from local storage. So that's how to set up this toggle with Webflow Interactions in Webflow.